click the start button. Okay. Are we in our natural? We're recording. We're recording. Yes, the Smoking Poetry Podcast Hello. is is here, and we're not finished with comedy. So we have Ferret is back. Um, he was qualified to be a co-host by coming on as a guest, <laughs> and he was supposed to do music, but he also told jokes and stuff. Um, you're and we fangirl ferret <laughs> and uh, we got leslie fox and i think i'm just gonna say go <laughs> hi it's sunday i'm so excited it's good this um, is so great it's so nice to do this with you too ferret because oh, you too um i'm in my fawning over you forever <laughs> like, okay like uh, you and Johnny Hopeless, I was, I was like screaming at your face, just expecting you to like be okay with all of my excitement <laughs> all the time. Yeah, Johnny Hopeless is awesome. Too. You should have him on. That would be fantastic. Yeah, Johnny Hopeless is awesome. Okay, we'll see if I can work on building up to get Johnny Hopeless. And, yes. Um, we'll see, but right now... Honestly, I don't think we're getting any higher. We got Leslie Fox. Oh my why, don't we, why don't we tell people a little bit, who is Leslie Fox? What are you doing here? Oh, my goodness. Um, like, what am I doing, like, here in Colorado Springs? No, why are you on or, my show? Like, oh. How the heck did this happen? What the heck? Um, oh, well, you know, I think the first time I saw you was uh, Ultra Flat Black, you know, and that open mic is so fun. That was run by Miss Sarah Garlic. Oh. You know, and she's yeah. lovely. And yeah, we've um, heard of her. Yeah, you know, just <laughs> maybe. Um, and uh, and then I saw you at Three E's a couple of times. Only and, once, um, actually. I've only been there once. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was, you know, no, I, f- I swear it was twice, but that's okay. I'm <laughs> old, and I'd be forgetting things. Um, but, you know, um, and then uh, I saw you a couple more times. And we just kind of keep connecting, you know, and uh, I think we're pretty supportive of each other. You know, I think that's really nice. Um, We'll see if that lasts after this here. Oh, my goodness. Um, (laughs) War. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Whatever. Um, So speaking of all this age and stuff and how long things have been going on, how long have you been a comedian? Oh, um... Uh, I think it's been like I've been doing comedy for like four years now Um, but I (laughs) excuse me was always a slow runner okay like I was not I was like like my feelings would get hurt but I was like I understood that I was gonna be really bad for a while so um, you know like I was still coming around but like I knew what it was like and I had weird habits you know and um excuse me it took me a while to like figure out what I was trying to say in the first place and I'm like I'm hella wordy like I love (laughs) words um and so but in comedy you need to use very few words and I was trying to like paint this like vivid picture that didn't need 5,000 words yeah, I get that. It's the same way with music, too. You don't want to be super wordy with your songs. Like, let it be, uh, You dude. want to be able to say the most with the fewest amount of words. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, but I'm getting better now. Um, I'm, like, I'm nowhere where I want to be. Um, but, you know, I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm getting a lot more comfortable with the idea of calling myself a comedian because that's what I want to do like and I'm trying to continue to do that and like success is different for everybody but you know I just I would like to be I would like to make as many people laugh as possible and in as many places as possible and I like this like discipline comedy requires and like I think it brings out the best in me at least Um, but that's you know (laughs) uh, it's been yeah yeah like uh, I feel like uh, as any type of performer you have this very specific type of discipline like this very specific type of self-awareness that like the general public doesn't have and it really like you can recognize when somebody is a performer just they have that kind of discipline like you said <laughs> yes like it's a ref- like an understanding of the refinement and that's one of the things I like about 
um, the, the music open mics and the comedy open mics blended together because I can like I, when I haven't seen you in a while because we've gone to different open mics and then I get to see you like the refinement shows right or you try something different and it's not it's not redundant it's so exciting to be like 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 the hook that you'd be trying like when it finally goes through like we get excited for each other <laughs> just like when like the joke that just has not been working finally like you get the pacing for it and like so a yeah. lot of the times the musicians too are like fuck yeah I, I love that I love being friends with a bunch of comedians because then I, I get I do see that I like I see you guys tell the same jokes um, and just like refine them and make them better and then when like there's one that like you've been working on for a long time and then like you said like it really lands it's like wow that was that didn't come out of nowhere that came from like a lot of practice right? and hard work <laughs> Too. like the hours that you put into it much like the discipline of a lawyer you know like do you yeah, think it's it. do you think is this cooperation versus competition I mean what is that like um I think it, it depends on like I think it depends on the person and I think it depends on the personality right um, because sometimes, you know, competition is not a negative thing. I think that's when, like, the personality stuff goes gets in the way, like, the ego weird stuff. Because some of the comedians are just, like, bros, right? So, and that's how they show love, is, like, being better each time, and then they're better than you, and, like, that's how they're, like, uh, you know? And I appreciate that kind of, that kind of camaraderie, and I do think that makes you rise to the occasion with people. Um, but... Like, like in any space, you get knuckleheads who are like always, like me, 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 or like they focus on the wrong thing. And like, I think ultimately, like you're just like, I always like ask myself, like, am I being funny and if I, am I being effective? Like that's because like I, they don't, they don't care about anything else when you're on stages. They just want you to be funny, and so like I try to really focus on that. Um, but. Um, I had lots of brothers, so, you know, like, I, it was always like, I gotta, I gotta be the best, you know, I was an older sibling, so it was like, I gotta be the best, eh, eh, eh. and so. Were there, are they comedians also in your family? Oh, they're so funny, <laughs> oh my god, all my siblings are hilarious, but, um, but no, I'm the only one that does, that does comedy, but my brother should, I think he's so funny, he's hilarious. Ah, uh, okay. So, See, here's what we were just doing. See, this is the, the what we're learning, the whole filming, posture, whatever, setting. I don't understand it. This is hard. <laughs> Anyways, what were we going to do? We are just going to do silly stuff. You were doing the... Silly stuff. Okay, silly <laughs> stuff. We were talking about something funny before we started recording. What were we talking about? About how watching ourselves and stuff. Oh, um, yeah, I said... Uh, uh, well, <laughs> like, a, like a performer or a call center representative, you know, because yes. when you're a theater like geek like I was, you know, yeah, yeah, you watch the film of the dress rehearsal and you're like, we can't do that again. Like, oh, absolutely not. You were in choir, listen to that. Like, uh, bitch, you're off. Don't ever do that <laughs> again. We're about to be live. Get your shit together. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. another level, you know? Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't aware that... Uh, you have to listen to yourself in a call center. Yeah, that's so crazy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, uh, I worked in call centers for a while, and I was a horrible leader. And then, like, I was, like, so, like, <laughs> you know. Um, and But one of the things that I had to do is I had to listen to the calls and coach. And, like, I, I was good at, like, identifying, like, what you could do better. I think I just could have presented it that way openly. So sorry if I was, like, a snitch about that. You know, <laughs> which, like, we have it. We've grown. I'm so sorry. But anyway. Um, oh, and so you would have to listen to, you know, yourself talk to this horrible person, like relive the trauma one more time, you know, and then have another person who like knows nothing about you right? and does not know anything about life, really, because quite honestly, their life is in absolute shambles. That's why they're there, too. Right. They just have like a smidge of more power and you make more than them when you do over time. And you know this about them. Right? Okay. And then they tell you about your voice and how productive you were and whether or not you solve the problem and you know how people are some people are awesome and they're like you're doing great great Mike but guess what Ferret I love this do this again go work on that 
right, bro? But no, there's also these pretentious bitches that are like, and you're just bad at your job. <laughs> they tell you that every week. And but you know, it's it's a lot easier to handle when you're watching it and it's your voice and it's you and you're the one that's like, you're so bad at your job <laughs> because you can do better. You know, you're like, it's gonna be okay. I can do this next open mic or like the next show not gonna happen like that but you know at a call center they're just like i ripped your spirit out and then i put it in my not so happy spirit yeah. jar customer service is already <laughs> such a nightmare but to have to relive it yeah <laughs> and it's always like and like it's when PTSD, when it's the like horrible person they make you listen to it again and a lot of the time because you know tls are very busy you know sometimes they choose the same call Right. So not only did you have to listen, you had to have it happen, and then you had to listen to it again. Right. If it's bad enough, you'll listen to it at least a third time. <laughs> Do it bad enough, you know, like four or five. Like, I'm like, this is why all of them have an attitude. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, I get it. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how to follow up. I'm trying that's, just not to laugh hysterically and you know, rest up the audio, honestly. Well, yeah, that, you know, that's a, that's uh, a rough life. But, you can do it. Uh, for real. <sighs> well, uh, what, what do we transition to after <laughs> after that? How how about we, how did you get into um, go from call center life <laughs> to comedy life? Uh, I was doing both for a while. Um and then, of course, the pandemic hit, so I just, like, switched up, like, what I was trying to do. And, um, but I like data entry and, like, customer service. I'm pretty good at that. Um, and I'm, like, I'm good at, like, distributing tasks and, like, getting things done. Um, I'm, I'm, like, I'm a good helper, and I lean into that. Um, I think we need, we need more helpers, yeah. you know. Um, and I'm just gonna be right in the middle, Farrah. Get closer. You're you're coming. You're cutting off the street. Don't come. You're cutting. We yeah. We want to see both of your guns there. You can't see half of your body there. So come on. Just real quick, Farrah. Just make them jealous. He has really been working crazy. out like that. I uh, noticed. Did you notice that? Oh my goodness. Just, I'm really lean. All right, we'll get your, we'll okay. get in the picture. You didn't listen to me. You're still out I, hanging I, off the I'm picture sorry. after that. Yeah, I'll, 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 <laughs> all right, I'll let's leave. get in the. Yeah, we're just gonna keep this right in the video yeah, too, we'll I think, and just make it all nice right. and the the joys of seating, so you can see us all. <laughs> um, yeah, we were talking about call center to comedy. So are you? Is this yeah. full time now, comedy, or are you doing other? Or, um, no, I am. Um, I'm, I'm really I've got a I've got a plan and I'm following it, but um, the hardest part I think is just like staying consistent um and like not getting weary you know because like it's an art form and i think art forms a lot of the time we're never pleased with what we're doing um and but i but i i'm really appreciative of the scene that i'm in like i feel like I, i've gotten to grow really really strong and organically where i am um and i've had really really great mentors like um like they they give you enough and they just let you do it and you are going to do with it with whatever you're going to do with it but it's up to you and I, I thrive in environments like that um, but I also I'm somebody that gets in my own way sometimes so I have to like I have to be I have to pay attention to that but like I, I guess I'm not paying attention to what everybody else is, is doing logistically like that, but I'm supporting what everybody's doing the best way that I can because I do think that there's room for everybody and I think everybody's doing pretty well right now, and that's exciting. Yeah, uh, um, like, uh, I, I hear a lot about how uh, comedy is really competitive, and I don't, I don't feel like it's the same way in the music scene. I feel like just kind of intrinsically in music, like everybody wants to support each other, and mm -hmm. that's part of it. The music, the bigger the music scene is, the more it benefits every musician in the scene. Mm -hmm. And I do, I do start to see a lot of that in certain comedy circles, but I do kind of, I do see that like sense of rivalry and competitiveness that mm -hmm. is like always there yeah and I think with I think with every kind of place though like when you have per strong personalities that's kind of inevitable is for them to kind of show out you know and so when we were like surprised that strong personalities are doing strong personality things <laughs> I, I chuckle a little bit but again I was a sibling like I like I 
I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I think, I think like in all facets, if you enjoy yourself and you mind your business, I think the farther you will go, um, because it's really fun out here. Like it is fun. Um, but it seems like the people who are having the most fun are the ones that uh, just are like funny and do the thing and mind the business. Mm -hmm. Speaking of out here, have you been other places doing this craft? Yeah, um, I have been to Texas and Vegas and um, oh, I, I was in Oklahoma and that was fun. Um, I was with uh, First Lady Productions for a while. Shout out to First Lady Productions. Um, and so I think the next place, like, I would like to go in lots of other different places, but I would like to really be um, quality funny first. Um, what and, does that mean? Um, where, like, we're, like, they're like, we're never pleased, right? Um, but I do think that after a while, like, you understand whether or not you're funny. Do you know what I'm saying, Barrett? I get that. Um, yeah. And so once you are, you lean into it and you try to refine it, right? But I'm also not trying to, like, waste people's time, you know? And for me, um, I will go to, like, open mics and stuff like that. But um, to leave my daughter to go somewhere for, like, two or three days is a big deal to me. Not a big deal to a lot of people. <laughs> but, like, and, and, like I, and I would love that a lot of the time, like, people can lean in on you know their their other their child's other parent I think those dynamics are beautiful um, I don't always have that luxury you know so um, when I do leave her I try really hard to make sure that it's like worthwhile the time um, but I would also like to provide something worthwhile of that time because I'm only going to be there for a short period of time so like I, I would like to make a good rumble and even leave like Mm -hmm. But I, um, I, but I'm also one of those people that like. I sometimes people are like, "You need to hurry up and do it. You need to hurry up and do it." And I'm like, "I hurt you, um, but you're not gonna rush me. Like I'm not. Like I know what I want to see for myself. And like, I as, as much as I appreciate it for everybody else. Like I know exactly what I'm expecting of myself, and it's a little different than just going to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, well, uh, so I actually. Um I actually went to film school because for a long time I was into filmmaking. Go out there! And uh, one of the things that they always talk about in that sort of like industry or that scene is that if you want to get something made, the best way to do it is to start making it. Um, so whether that means, you know, uh, just filming something like like just like a demo on on like a on your digital camera or whatever mm -hmm. um, or on your iPhone or whatever making something is better than just sitting around and waiting until you're ready to make something mm -hmm. right. because the thing about film is like it requires so much money and so many people that nobody's gonna even get something started unless you already have something to show them right and so um, I do understand I hear this from a lot of comedians that they want to be like ready that they mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people say they want to be undeniably funny <laughs> right um, Which, mm, is and, there such a thing <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> but I come from I come from that world where if you want to get something done you have to start making it you have to start doing it yes well and you have to keep refining it too like that's the that's the thing but I do think there's like an arsenal of skills that you learn just like in music like there's just and it's with time like all of a sudden all these like phrases that they said at the beginning you're like oh snap that's what that means ah. <laughs> and then once you're able, once you have that arsenal that's when like you're able to go on stage and you're able to riff right because you know that even if you start to go a little faster, if they start to get a little louder, you can go faster. Like, you know, you can like caress the energy with your skill. And I think after a while, like, you know that you're funny. Like you've been, you've been funny mm -hmm. enough times in a row that like, stop, stop it. Okay, stop it. <laughs> Speaking of stop, <laughs> it, stop it, perfect file slice time, baby. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. You know, he broke up with me, or I broke up with him, but then he broke up with me. You know how that thing works? And he was like, I'll leave this relationship unscathed. I was like, if you don't <laughs> sit down and shut the hell up. I paid for this text message for you to say some shit like that. Oh my 
gosh. That's <laughs> you know. What are we laughing about? They're wondering after we're back from the break, halfway into the conversation. Uh, oh, it's like one of those we give them the punchline before the setup. There, <laughs> old English is not a romance language. That's my my take. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you just have to come see Leslie in person to figure out what the heck that means. How about that? What what, what kind it's of stuff are you doing? one of the many doing? secrets. What kind of stuff are you doing? What kind of stuff? Ooh, yeah. I don't yeah. do drugs. <laughs> well, <laughs> legally, because we don't, kidding. you know, you have I'm that totally other job. Kidding. I don't want you to confess. I'm totally kidding. Yeah. I'm totally kidding. Yeah. Um, you do that. <laughs> I try to. Okay. I try to keep it light. Keep keep it tight. <laughs> Well, where are you going to be keeping things light and tight? Any play, anything coming up, or what's oh, going? Oh, um, mm, um, so on Tuesday, um, I'm going to be back at uh, Comedy Works doing New Talent Night, and I love New Talent Night. Um, like, it is, it is a lot of fun, and that room is so big, and it's nice to to participate in the bigger arenas, you know, and. Um, is this a weekly thing or, oh, or no, monthly? Oh, no, no, no. The last time I was there was in January, oh. and I did not do as well as I wanted to. Okay. Um, so, but, like, I do so well when, like, if I don't do as well as I usually do, like, I'm I'm coming for, for you know, proverbial blood, you know. I'm like, <laughs> Well, I'm sure you it's will. Over. It's so, you know. I'm right. sure you will have done great, because by the time this is out, it will be done, honestly. Yeah, I, I really hope so. Um, <laughs> it's already amazing, and everyone's yeah. already talking about it by the time they're watching you talk about what you're going well, to do. What I'm trying to do is, like, trying to just, like, release more and, like, rely on my skill and how and how I want to do it and just get better and be free to do that. And I think that's all that you really can do. Um, but I do put a lot of pressure on myself because I'm a perfectionist, and I'm like... What is that like being a perfectionist and a comedian? Because it seems to me that to be comedians should not be perfectionist. I would think. What is that like? Um, I've always like had a very high like expectation of myself and like my performance, and um, and it doesn't really like I just that's kind of like my personality. I'm very much like no matter what I do, like I I like to do it well. I like to do it thoroughly. Like I like to know like the ins and outs of it. Um, but I think that comes with that kind of personality, right? Um, like, because when it's not done well, the the excuses aren't the same. But like people like that can be called very cold, you know. Because when you give me an excuse in the same turn, you know, I'm like, that's nice. <laughs> like, um, but it wasn't done. But then I'll listen to your feelings later, you know. <laughs> but I'm very much like that up to myself too. Um, but I think that that helps me like have a very good standard of what I want to see um, because ultimately with comedy right um, as like collaborative as it is it's very intimate and I like that like it is very much you and your jokes right and the jokes only come to life as much as you do and how much life you breathe into it and how much discipline you know will come out of it and so like how much is the words of the joke versus the telling of the joke ooh it depends on the joke um, but you certainly you have to get to it like as quickly as possible, like and some people can paint a picture a bit more vividly than others, you know. And some people are better at, you know, uh, I guess wordsmithing the thing together to paint the mirage. But I think that um, I think the discipline of just being funny is a lot harder than people think, um, especially like when you start to get into a groove and you like certain jokes and stuff like that, like the illusion of new, like that was one thing that, you know, you know, sometimes you sound like, like, um, like I guess rehearsed, you know, and that's a hard skill to be able to kind of make it sound like it just occurred to you. Right. How much, um, of, like the funny person in the conversation or the funny person in the group of friends necessarily translates to being a comedian um i think for some people it works for them i think that makes them more charming right um but i think that like if you're aware of that um you'll notice that like a lot of us are just like you're so much funny oh, you are. 
<laughs> Real, I'm like, thank you. That's like the highest compliment you can give me. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that it definitely helps. Like when you are naturally funny and then you're able to do it like that definitely sets you apart. But the discipline, I think a lot of the time, because people are funny in conversation, they're like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and come do this. And then they're funny like two or three times, right? And they're like, ah, I've uh, seen uh, so many uh, times. Uh, yeah, uh, like somebody will just go up at an open mic who's never done comedy and be like, oh, I can just do this. And they're and like, oh. Bomb. And they've been so unfunny for the first time in their whole life. <laughs> and it was bomb behind a microphone <laughs> and then like some people like they practice for their first one like like they say it like 1500 times they're like bam, 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 bam. and then they go up there and they're still not funny like and they're like oh my god is the okay it's inevitable like the more times you go the the better at going up you're going to get whatever you practice is whatever you practice like that's on you um, but the more that you're on stage, the easier it's going to be to get on stage. And that's like, that's just inevitable. I don't know what to say about that other than that. What's the key? And it's like discipline. Yeah. Just start doing it and get better. That's yeah. The each same way a couple of it. times. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say you've like always been like the funny person or you like read the funny kid growing up or? Um, I thought I was funny a lot. Um, I think that I always got on people's nerves because I was always a lot, you know, like, like the dancing it, all the time, to, like still was me. Like I was always loud. I was always like, you know, Aw. um, and I think, I, I don't think I was always like trying to get people to pay attention to me, but I was just always trying to have fun with whatever was happening. And, um, and I didn't mind I was, I guess I wasn't easily embarrassed, um, but I can totally like see how I would be getting on people's nerves like <laughs> all day. What were you doing? What made you make a transformation to being this comedian? I mean, because it seems like I don't want to. I guess let me just ask the, the tough question. How old are you? Oh, oh I'm just kidding. I'm 31. So you didn't start, I mean, you're much younger than me, and you started a hell of a lot younger, younger than me, but nonetheless, you didn't start right out of high school, you know, going through this. No. So what happened? No. Um, well, so uh, I, at one of the call centers, I used to have, like, the, I, we called it the, the Tuesday night conversation, because Tuesday was our Friday, right? And we would just roast what was happening and each other, and I would a lot of times go off on like this I would surmise the week <laughs> of bullshit you know um and then I went to another call center and I would just kind of rant and um I would say the things I I would like to think that I was saying the things that a lot of people wanted to say they just felt uncomfortable saying and um and so the, a couple of them were like you should totally like start try to do stand up and I was like oh no I don't think so um and then a couple of years later, I was at uh, Oscar Blues. Or no, I was not. Oscar, I was at Habitat for Humanity, and I met um, I met Sarah B. Serious, oh, okay. and she was volunteering there, and I was the cashier there. And she told me about uh, I think it was I don't remember it, but it was um, it was one of her open mics, and then Oscar Blues. So. I came to Oscar Blues and I held the mic way too far away from my face <laughs> and um, I stripped the mic like it was a <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I started doing comedy and um, I didn't stop I guess you yeah, know um, but it was it was fun yeah I was I was horrible uh, at first but. You know how that's, that's actually that's cool. Sarah, so Sarah was like the first local comedian that you really mm -hmm. met. That's really cool. Yep, yep. She is. I call her my comedy mama <laughs> because she's she's so wonderful and she's so funny and like she um she, very 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 good with words. Right. Well, and like she's she's been so kind to to have a couple writing sessions with me and like we go to coffee every now and then and she's just so perceptive and she thinks so differently than me and I love that because I think if you are so with like the with like similar minded people all the time like you don't 
nothing happens and she just makes me want it she thinks so simplistically and I'm so like chaotic and just every everywhere you know and I'm trying to get big enough to convince her to come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but so, but She'll before be we wonderful. get too big, file size, it's another ten minutes. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's how the see we start. The more to come. Yes. So it's okay. Oh yes. That's the so, point. Okay. Uh, so we were. I asked her what we're going to do next, and she started talking about it. And I'm like, yeah. let's hit the record button. Yes. I'm and let's get Ferret's head in the camera here. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. We keep. We, it's all raw here, but we nonetheless want to get some oh, of your God. head in the camera. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, we, oh, we're hosting. You are putting shows together. What are you doing? Yes. Yeah, so me and Mo Clemma do the Vultures Viction Show at Vultures. We, it's usually like every three months or so, um, and we always have live music first. I love it when Wendy, Miss Wendy Bird, is is there because she like she has a whole vibe. Like, and I'm trying to find like staples. That's why like I've had you twice because like certain certain musicians have been like setting a tone and a precedent for the show and i love that i love that so much um but yeah it's a uh, we have an all uh lady lineup and then we have a male host who like always hop, hypes up uh the the women um and like they they said that they wanted a ladies night and i was like totally can do that but i'm not about to like tell the dudes they can't be there so you know so I was like okay cool we're gonna do you know a male host so that way because I do think too like a lot of the time they're like oh my god you know they don't work together and then that's just your presumptions you know um so I like that the show highlights the ladies but you know we always have a really really funny funny host and I appreciate that because I love them too yeah anything else you're putting together or planning in the future that you want to tell people Ooh, not yet. Um, I'm just kind of like slow moving, you know. I try to stay consistent. Um, I have a few shows coming up, um, but uh, July is quickly, quickly ending. So it's crazy. But in August, I think I'm going to be at Lulu's a couple times, and I'll be in Pueblo, and um, and in Denver. So. That'll be a lot of fun, and then September I'm going to be everywhere else too. Um, slowly, going to start you know, stepping out. You know. Mm -hmm. What else? What other dying questions do you want to get out of Leslie? Um. So, uh, I don't know. I guess we talked about your your siblings a little bit, but I kind of I feel like I, I I relate to you on this. You're also like a middle child. Right. Directly in the middle. Me too. So mm -hmm. I have an older brother and two younger sisters, and like age-wise, I am directly in the middle. Um, yeah, weird place to be, because you know you see like the the original OG down to like the improvised ways, and you're like, oh, <laughs> I, I see why I'm like somewhere in the middle here. Like maybe, <laughs> uh, you know. You know. One thing I want to make sure we do before we forget is give a little shout out to our host of the of the evening here. We are here at Poor Richards yes, downtown, we are. and they uh, they do a Sunday night open mic which we love because they give you like twenty minutes. You know, they give you twenty minutes to practice, and so that's that awesome. Lovely? Um, and Fair and I have both been doing this a few times, and have, you haven't been doing the open mic here quite yet, have you? No, I have not. Maybe, well, maybe, here, maybe hang out tonight. Here's what I like about this place. I just want to say because uh, I know there are like a lot of open mics on Sundays for comedy, mm -hmm. but there hasn't been like uh, an open mic for music on Sundays, and this is like the first yeah. one. So I that's think that's nice. really cool. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so come. Check out Hannah is a great host, and thank you, Hannah. Thank and so as is Seth. So thank you so much. Okay, now it's time to ask the, the tough questions. What's the tough question? Why is your fedora Slytherin? Um. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I have the cool hat. My little. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I wear. I don't know. I've been. There's been this debate of should I do the hat or not do the hat, and I just. I don't know. Just try different. You know, I have two you know. right now. I'm gonna get a hat yeah. collection. 
a man of many hats. Yes, that's what I'll be to cover up my uh, baldness. <laughs> oh my goodness, or your genius. Well, <laughs> what? I, I, don't, I, I don't have any comebacks because I'm not a genius. And I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say except just to stutter. <laughs> but also, we talk a little more about Poor Richards, though, because this was super nice of them to let us use. It's this so is amazing. lovely out here, too. And, they really and the nice. food is great. They have, what do they got? They got a bookstore, toy store. Uh, what's a food? Rest restaurant, cafe, bar, all those things. Yes, and frankly, Whatever you want to be, baby. Um, the owner has kind of been progressive before it was cool to be progressive in Colorado Springs. So I want to give them a little extra shout out for that. I um, hope that's an okay thing to say. Um, but, and um, what else do we want to talk about before, or do we want to say like a good night or something? Have you back for more episodes? Um, can I can I plug one thing? No. Yes. Oh. <laughs> of course you can plug. Okay. Uh, come to Deer Summer Fest on September 30th. Uh, I'll be playing a set there, and there's going to be a lot of local musicians, and I think a couple that you've had on your show. I know no Noah Vale is going to be playing uh, as well. So uh, September. Oh, do you want to come be in our little? Hello. Sh- no, want to come? Be yes. Like, you we're look so up. amazing. Oh, come not. say hi. You're going to be in the episode right. now. Hello. Perfect. Hi. I'm just like a so, pirate. I host the open mic. Well, no one can see can see you. Okay. So get, get your face in here a little bit more. You can't see the half face okay, thing. Okay, that's mine. Tell them who you are and what what we got here. Oh, uh, you're on you're on the yes. air. Yes. All right. This is basically live. Sit down. Tell oh, okay. them. Okay. Oh, it's live. That's fun. Yeah. You're oh, right. no, I'm it's too not. Big for the frame. It's actually not live. No. Ah. But just pretend it's it is. So we oh, okay. And, and, we must plug. And we yes. can't see you. We all right. Get, get in there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm right. Right. Well, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Alrighty, well, um, I'm one of the hosts at this open mic over at Rico's Cafe that we do every Sunday, starting at 5.30, all that jazz. Yeah. Who are you? Oh, my name is Zeth Gross. I, uh, and how do we find you? How do you find? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's the final like question for you. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't forget. That's, <laughs> like don't, th- don't think I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me at my Instagram at uh, silverback underscore sax. Um, yeah, I need to go help Ferris set up for the... What about, what, what about, I know Hannah didn't get in the picture, but why don't we talk about Hannah, because Hannah's also an amazing host. She oh, yeah. Why don't we, what, what, how do we find Hannah? I know. Oh, oh, never I, mind. I, I, we'll I have it. I don't remember. A taggy it. something. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have a taggy thing for Ferret. Leslie is, the, is really what we're here for, though. Um, again, Ferret was on a prior episode. That's why we're not spending too much time. Because we already spent a lot of freaking time with you, dude. You went, that, well, that was one of the longest episodes I ever did was with Farrah, but it was actually really amazing. Oh, yeah. And there's some great music, and he's funny, funny, funny. But um, we're here for you tonight. <laughs> Already stop so, it. Okay, we'll go get some music set up. Right. Y'all, yes. let y'all get back into the pad, okay? Yeah. Oh, your owl is lovely. <laughs> All right, so. You have a hip owl. Well, we'll tell them where to find you and all that funny um, stuff. So, uh, on all socials, I am El Blexican, you know, because I didn't know that, you know, it, it was Afro-Latina, so I just called us Blexican, you know. Mm-hmm. So, E-L-L-E, Blexican. We'll have you back to do that routine some more. And, um, but, yeah, this was wonderful. Thank you, you are, for having I, me. I cannot remember laughing this much, so well, you're welcome, and thank. You. I've, I we were just talking about how I'm so bad about thank yous and your welcome signs. It's like one of my horrible, horrible things. Well, but I appreciate you being so, patient. It's wonderful. So I'm going to try not to cry and say thank you. Don't cry. I'm going to cry because no. this was so. Uh, un- you've been okay. one of my. Bi- you are not only one of the funniest people I know, but frankly, you've been one of uh, my biggest supporters. And, you got me. And talking to me about things, and um, I appreciate that too. So. Yes, and we'll keep doing great things, and then we'll check in in the meantime, and then you tell me all the things you've accomplished. And, and you have seen that the show you were about to do is, was already amazing, so thank you. See you next time Bye. on the Smoking Poetry Podcast. See the smoke? It's and I guess I'll let you stop since you're closest the, to the thing. Do you see the smoke? It's the... Oh.